us up and he was like, hey, you know, I wrote a few people in other jails. What do y'all go by? I'm trying to figure out who y'all are. And I'm like, you mean, what do you mean who we are? We're just a couple guys from the neighborhood. And he was like, so y'all ain't hooked up in any organization or gangs or nothing? I'm like, no, not really. We're just a couple guys in the neighborhood. We look out for each other. So he was like, y'all should seriously think about giving yourselves a name and getting some paperwork going. Get a, you know, an oath and a manuscript and paperwork and rules. And that's how you start a gag. So I, at the time, I didn't think nothing of it. A couple months had went by. And a guy that I was locked up with at county jail before I went to prison had got transferred to my jail where I was at named Snoopy. He was a little high up, not real high, but he was a little high up in the bloods. The bloods are Damu. They're under the five. Five star. So he heard what happened and all that and he was like stutter i hear you're out here doing your thing like no not me dude just had to handle a situation that had to be handled that's that's like dude it had to he's like nah i hear that i hear that why don't y'all give yourselves a name and make it official so this was the second organization that then recommended that so we did we sat down we we made the paperwork we gave ourselves a name. Y'all can Google it. It's called PBF, Polar Bear Family. So we had we had to get paperwork through an organization because anytime you make an organization in a prison, to make it official, it has to be sponsored by another official organization. Give you an example, the DMI. Dead Man Inc. They're a well-known white gang in the Maryland prison system. And back when it was started, it had got sponsored by BGF. So we couldn't be sponsored by BGF because the DMI already was. So we got sponsored through the Bloods. <clears throat> Snoopy had to write his people up in New York, wait for approval to come back it came back so long well, that's a whole nother story but long story short it was approved and we became pbf and there's this lady from the neighborhood who was a correctional officer at the time in brockbridge her name's lieutenant Hurd. her brother used to be a bounty hunter for courtside bail bonds freddie Hurd. They're a known family from the neighborhood, but anyway, the reason I'm bringing her up is we didn't cause trouble. Polar bears in prison did not cause trouble. Unless you fucked with us, we didn't give a fuck who you was. We didn't care who you was. We didn't care what you did. As long as you didn't fuck with us, you had no problems. We had rules. You couldn't rob people. If you couldn't main, if you couldn't maintain a me, uh, some kind of means of survival without robbing people, then you wasn't a man. So you know, and and you had to go to school, you had to go to school or work while you was in prison. We had it in the in the paperwork. <clears throat> so I don't know why she did what I'm about to tell y'all, but she did it. It was 19 of us at the, at the time. And we used to hustle tobacco and weed in prison. I ain't gonna say how or who, cause I don't wanna put this person out there. But I used to get two cans of tobacco in Brockbridge a week. Like we didn't want for anything. We hustled while we was in there. We didn't rob from nobody, but we hustled. So we had our means of survival. And what Lieutenant Hurd did is she separated us. After about a year, 
of us being in there I don't know if word got back to her, but we had two of the CEOs on payroll. I ain't going to say his name. I ain't trying to get him hemmed up. I don't know if he's still a CEO. But when we had yard, if he was in the yard, we paid him 100 hours, and he stayed in the sh shack. We did that so certain things could get thrown over the fence i don't know why but this was one of the only jails in jessup they had four towers in the yard only one was operational so you had three quarters of the yard that was against woods so we had people come up in the woods area launch bundles maybe a little bit bigger than a softball <clears throat> different things in it you know my tobacco got in from me. I was on road crew. My tobacco got in through me. So we didn't need to get the tobacco thrown over. That was the way I was getting it in was too easy. It was like it was like it was meant to be. So <clears throat> But yeah, she separated us. Some of us went to ECI, some of us went to WCI, some of us went to Hagerstown. Some of us went to Cumberland. I mean, they separated the shit out of us. I ended up going to Hagerstown. And I was minimum almost about to be pre-release. So when I got sent to Hagerstown to the new jail, which is MCTC, Maryland Correctional Training Center. When I got there, two days later, I went and seen the, the case manager. He looked at my paperwork and he's like, Mr. McClellan, I don't even know why are you here you got like two years left a year and a half left you're supposed to be almost at work release I'm like Dude, your guess is good as mine i don't know so i was only there two weeks and they shipped me down to uh b triple c baltimore city correctional center and but the point i'm trying to, to make the, the, the story is being in prison for only seven or eight months and having to do and put in work on that level, I thought for sure I was turning my five into 50. But in that moment, like, you can't allow things like that to happen. There's, there's just no question. You cannot allow that. No way, shape, or form. You get robbed, you get disrespected, you get called out your name, you got to handle it immediately. Like, there's no if, ands, or buts at all. Or you will not have a pleasant rest of your day. <sighs> so that's how, number one, that's how the polar bears got started. Me and someone else was the heads of it. We created it. And then we started recruiting people who we thought was... You know, who could handle their own and not cause trouble on purpose. Not a knucklehead. I will tell y'all one of our rules. If you asked to be one of us, that automatically eliminated your shot ever of being a polar bear. You wasn't allowed to ask us. We had to come to you. I made that one of the first rules of it because if you could ask us, then we'd have every lame white dude who couldn't look out for himself we'd have every lane just coming to join just for protection and that's why i made that rule no we had to come to you you had to be sought out you could not ask but from that moment on we earned a lot of respect one of our polar bears at the time who was a member, he had himself a little addiction problem even in prison. He liked to mess around with the hair on even in prison. So we warned him a couple times, yo, you guys, stop. You're going to get eliminated. You're going to be dog food if you don't stop. If anyone says dog food or Al Po or something like that, it just means you're going to get ate. You're going to get eaten. You're going to get... SOS. You're gonna get smashed on sight. So 
after like the third or fourth time and I really tried to push for him not to get eaten because he was connected to my girl who was home was one of her homegirls' husbands. So it was like, <laughs> if I if I authorized a hit, not only is that gonna put my girl in a position, it's gonna put me in a position when I get home. But prison politics, man, certain things has to happen. So they kept coming to me, stutter, yo, you're only doing this because of such and such. Yo, I'm telling you, we're gonna take a vote. You know, if you don't vote with us, it, they, it ain't gonna look good. And I told my man, I know, I know. I said, fuck it. Tell him my vote is he's got to go. He's got to go. So I'm in the phone room about 15, 20 minutes. And the dude I'm talking about who wouldn't stop getting high while he was in jail. That, that was one of our rules. You could not get high. Weed is one thing, but you couldn't get high on no coke, you couldn't get high on no heroin, you couldn't do anything hard, you know? So, he comes strolling and bopping and straggling past the phone room and every hole in his head was leaking. His mouth was leaking, nose was leaking, his eye was leaking. I even think he had blood somehow leaking out of his ear. I don't know, but blood was everywhere so this guy comes walking past the firm room and i notice him and i'm turning my head because i know he's gonna say and he seen me and he said it stutter yo you 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 authorized this so i just said his name's like yo you got to go get out of this prison you got to go and i turned my back on him went back to my phone call and the person I was talking to, I was like, it just happened. I'm not gonna say no more, but it just happened. And that person was like, oh Lord, I'm gonna get a phone call. And so anyway, the CO see him going to medical, which was a couple, couple doors up from the phone room and they sound the alarm, which means everybody's gotta lock in. Person I'm on the phone with, they say, is that because of him? They say, yep. I said, if I can, if we ain't locked down later, I'll give you a call. So we hung up and we was locked down for like a week. But yeah, that sucked. I had to give that okay. But prison politics, man. So don't go to prison. If you can't handle this kind of shit, don't go to prison. Because you will eventually get put in a position where you got to scrap. That well, Scrapping is going to happen no matter what. But you're going to get in a position eventually where you either gotta stab somebody up hit somebody in the head with a lock and a sock or like i mean you get put in positions where you you might have to eventually take somebody's life so if you this my recommendation is don't go to prison life is 10 times easier when you do the right thing I'm gonna start making more videos about life after prison, transitioning from prison life to the free world. It's all interesting shit, man. And you know, if I could help somebody not get high, not go to jail, stay out, maybe get their life together. Every, so hopefully out of every hundred people that watch my videos, even if that many watch, if I could help one or two people, you know, oh well, that, that's cool. I, that's that's a good thing. So yeah, man, y'all be cool. God bless, and stay safe. See ya.